Obviously excited to see you guys again. I uh, don't get to do this a lot, you know, so every time we, we get to do this, it's normally the start of something and the end of something. And so, you know, our guys, obviously, I've been working extremely hard this summer. Uh, I think it's, well, it's a little different about college football now. You know, those two hours you get with them in the summer in June and July uh, are huge going into camp. So, you know, I think this is the first year since I've been here, and this is year five for me. Uh, I think we got leadership at every level of the defense. Uh, we've got old guys, obviously, up front, and DJ Dale and the Boy Bees and Byron Youngs that understand the system, understand the expectation, all right, and providing leadership in that group. Uh, obviously, you got Henry back uh, in the inside room uh, after a year experience in our system. Uh, in the process here. You got Moody that's been here obviously year five. Um, that's got some game experience, but more importantly knows the expectation and, and is hungry to try to earn that starting position. And then the back end with the battles coming back and the DeMarco Helms coming back that, that understand the checks, the adjustments, uh, how to practice and what it's going to take. Uh, this is the first time I think in five years at every level you've got experience coming back. Uh, with the addition of that, obviously we've added in some new players, uh, whether it be in transfers uh, or freshmen. Uh, it's going to be our responsibility to get those guys, bring them along. Uh, I think they understand after the summer uh, what it takes to compete here. Um, and obviously from a defensive standpoint, um, the terminology and what it's going to take you know, to not make mental errors on Saturdays, which is most important. So I like where we're at. I, th I think the leadership is where it needs to be. We had to continue to develop the bottom of the roster with these young guys. Uh, it's a new year. Uh, I think those guys that are, that are in that room, the DJ Dales, you know, the Will Andersons, the Henry Toto, I think they remember the last 15 minutes of football that they played, all right? And it's not how we wanted it to be. And the bottom line, we didn't get it done uh, when we needed to. We couldn't stop the run when we needed to. Uh, so I, I think that's still in the gut. And I think that's, you know, when they come to work every day, you know, we want them to remember that feeling, just like we remember that feeling. And it's going to take, you know, it's going to be up to us, obviously as a unit, us collectively as a team, uh, to prepare the right way so we don't feel that again. All right? Yep. I just wanted to ask about Jaheim Otis and the weight that he's lost this offseason and also just in your time around the game, how you've seen the defensive line position evolve physically from maybe some of the bigger guys of the past to what it is now. Absolutely. Uh, you know, for, for Jaheim, uh, obviously he's from Mississippi, so I recruited Jaheim. So to, to see his transformation over over four-year period, you know, because Jaheim first came to camp here in eighth grade and got an offer in eighth grade. And obviously you can see spurts on tape throughout his high school career that he could be really special. And then you can see a lot of plays where he's taking a play off. You know, it's like, okay, that's going to get us beat. You know, so the most exciting thing for me, Jaheim, he's always been a great kid. But, like, when he accepted to come to Alabama, he knew what it was going to take. He knew it was going to be hard. He could have gone to a lot of other places where he wasn't asked to do what he's going to be asked to do here. And he knew weight was the biggest thing, and this is what we had to focus on. And that ended up being one of his biggest decisions to come here was the nutrition, was Miss Amy and the strength and conditioning to be able to develop him and get him down to where he needed to be to play good winning football. And he's done an unbelievable job of that. You know, so I'm excited about him. I think collectively as a unit, I, mean, I think that's your next question, uh, I think they know what to do. I think it's important to them. I think they're playing hard. Uh, obviously, I think the biggest thing up front is – is you can't make your own play. You know, I think sometimes at every level we have guys that press, that want to make plays, and in turn you don't do your job, and that's when explosives occur. Whether we're not in our gap, our rush integrity is not right, we get a scramble, they create explosives. So uh, I think we're better as a unit. I think Coach Roach does a good job with that, so we're expecting big things from him. Up right here with Chase. Coach, could you talk a little bit about the competition at the – the inside linebacker position next to Henry with Moody and some younger guys and the yeah. rest. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think obviously, you know, no, no position here is in stone, but obviously Henry had a good year. He's got leadership, right? So he's at the mic position. Uh, I think at that will spot, right, based on what you're in, whether you're in a three-fork system or a four-two, based on what you're seeing, you've got Moody that's got experience in the system. You got Deontay Lawson, who I think had a good spring, had a good summer. I think he's having a good fall camp. I think there's a push right there right now. And then you add young players to that with Jahai Campbell and I think Ian Jackson has been preparing the right way practicing hard so and we're moving some guys around and we're getting those guys to compete and that's what fall camps for but yeah we'll have to come out of camp and see who that guy is sticking with the linebackers you obviously get Will back but also Dallas finished the season strong just what do you see from that unit as a whole and, and what can that duo kind of bring to this defense this fall 
Yeah, obviously, I think, you know, if you got one elite pass rusher, you know, I think people can play him for him and chip him and, you know, do certain things. When you, when you got two, uh, I think that's an exciting thing. But I think most importantly, obviously, you got to be able to stop the run on base downs to get him in obvious passing downs. Let, let's, let's let these guys go rush and do what they do best. But I, I think the depth of that position, what is unique? Um, because you, you talk about Will, you talk about Dallas, which Will had a great year. Dallas, you know, towards the end of the year really started coming on. But Chris Braswell has been really showing up. Heavy-handed, good pass rusher. You know, I mean, we got a lot of depth at that position to where we got to do a good job as coaches to get our best players on the field. And what package allows those guys to stay on the field, regardless of the down and distance, regardless of the personnel that you're going against. So uh, I think it's going to be critical for those guys to be on the field for us to be at our best. John Zener here. Hi, Coach. Uh, what have you seen from Will Anderson from the end of last season and now that says, I don't have to worry about him getting complacent? He's still working to get better, still doing everything you want him to do. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think that's, that's what's different about Will than a lot of people. Like that, Will's always been that way. And so, I mean, he came in hungry, preparing the right way. And, you know, I think, you know, Coach used this term, relentless discontent. Like, that's who Will is. All right. So, I mean, regardless of what, you know, individual accolade he gets and all the praise he gets from you guys and all that, like that doesn't change who Will is. Will shows up every day with the same mindset. And I'm going to outwork everybody else. I'm going to prepare harder than everybody else. And I'm going to improve my craft. So I don't have to put expectations on Will. All right. He has his own. He's the hardest on himself. So, you know, he, he's different than a lot of guys. But he, he doesn't let the noise get to him. You know, he's trying to be the best football player he can be. And then he's trying to bring people with him. And that's a daily job for him that he looks forward to. In the middle with Michael. A transfer comes into a new, to a position, a positional group that's established. How closely do you watch that dy dynamic of the team component when you have a guy who's coming in to, to challenge an already established group? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, so normally when you take a transfer, you're saying, hey, there's an immediate need at the position, right? Or you would normally go younger and have time to develop it, right? So there's already going to come in and that, that room's going to think that, all right, he's coming to do what? He's coming to compete, right, for competition. But I also think you have to have the right people in the room already. I'm talking about from a character standpoint, right, that like to compete and want that. They want somebody else to bring out the best in them. So I think that the group that we have in there in the defensive back room are very humble, hardworking guys that aren't egotistical. That hey, coach, you can bring in anybody we want. I know I'm not to compete, and I know I'm going to have to be my best. And we want the best guy, whoever it is in this room, to play so we can be at our best to win the football game. Now, from the transfer standpoint, you know, I think it's who is the guy. I think you got to know who you're bringing in, all right, from a character standpoint. Because if he comes in and he's not the guy, all right, and he doesn't have a good moral compass, and he doesn't have high character, you can have issues. All right, and then now what's that do to your locker room? What's that do to the position group? But the ones that we brought in, first and foremost, they got to be the right type of people. You know, and then secondly, all right, they got to be able to help impact our team in some way on some team. So uh, I think what we've done on all the transfers we brought in, they have both. Tony in the middle. Uh, here, Coach. Yes, sir. There's been a lot said about the pressure you guys are able to generate on the edge, but in terms of interior pressure, maybe especially on the defensive line, who are some of those guys that you could see kind of filling the role that you've had with, you know, Federian Mathis, Quinn Williams, those kind of guys? Yeah, I mean, I, I think obviously it's early. We just put pads on yesterday, but, you know, I think, you know, between uh, – Burroughs, you know, Jamil Burroughs, I think he's got some twitch in there. Uh, Byron, obviously. We leave DJ in there. DJ's been an every down player for us right now, knows what to do, gives great effort. Uh, believe it or not, I mean, Jaheim has got a lot more wiggle than y'all are going to think he's got. All right, so, I mean, he's a guy internally that if you leave one guy on him, you know, good luck. But, you know, we'll package that. Jamarian Latham showed up. We've got a lot of guys that would normally be five techniques in a 4 2 system that when you get to third down, you bump them inside to the three techniques. And this goes get those guys one on one. But you know the thing that we've got to do is it doesn't matter on third down if you're gonna rush four guys who are your four best pass rushers. I don't give a shit if you call them outside linebacker, D line, or inside linebackers. Let's get them four guys to rush and put them where we need to put them. And that's what we're gonna have to do. Coach, you talk about having leadership at every level, and then also having younger guys you need to bring along. How much does it help having leaders on the team that can help you do that, where it's not just all in the coaching staff? No, I mean, I think it's huge. You know, I mean, the guy, every great team that I've been around is player run. 
You know, I think obviously in anything that we do, hey, here's the expectation, here's the standard. But if the people under you aren't upholding that and pushing other people around them to it, you're not going to get what you want. And so I think I think it's huge that it's spread on both sides of the ball. Um, I think a lot of times you see certain teams where it's loaded on one side. I'm not saying from a talent standpoint. I'm saying from a leadership standpoint, and one side slips. So I, I think this is a unique team to where we've got leadership in the right spots on both sides of the ball uh, that is important to them, and they do it the right way, but they bring people with them. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's got to come inside out, uh, not always top down. Coach, you had an off-season incident uh, in, in February. What have you taken away from that, and, and, and how have you moved forward from that? Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I think anytime you're in a leadership role uh, in anything that you do, you've got a responsibility. You know, so I think it's you know every day we talk to our kids about making good decisions, right, and that there's consequences for making bad decisions. And, and I made a poor, very poor decision uh, that affected a lot of other people than just myself. All right, and it was selfish. And I know it opened up a lot of emotions for a lot of people because can, people can be affected by making that decision. Right? And I was wrong, and I got to suffer the consequences for it. And I've done a lot of things in my life, obviously, to adjust what I did, right, to become a better person for it, whether being a father, a husband, and a coach. And I think the biggest thing for me, obviously, is like I told the team, I met with them that next day. It's like, look, man, I can tell you anything I want. I got to show you, right? And so to provide that leadership and get the trust back from the team and made a mistake and learn from it and move on. Hey, Coach, uh, tell us how things are going at the uh, cornerback competition on both sides, both corners. Yeah, I mean, obviously, from, from a game experience standpoint, you know, uh, Kyrie comes back with game experience from last year. Kool-Aid had game experience from last year. Uh, you bring in a guy that had SEC game experience uh, in Eli Ricks. But then we've got some younger guys that, that have been here at least a year, and I think Terry Ian Arnold is really flashing. And I think every day those guys got to come in and compete. Um, so, I mean, that's what this camp is about. We're going to get through this camp, and we're going to find the best two corners. And ain't who's listed at right corner, who's listed at left corner. Uh, we're moving that around daily. We're giving them all an opportunity to compete against the best guys uh, and see who, you know, who can cover versus our ones. But uh, I think every day, you know, that is a battle that we're moving around to see hey, who comes out on top. But I think, I think there's five guys right now that are pushing all right, to who, who's the best two and, and find a way to rotate the others. Um, you talked a little bit about Jalen Moody, and I wanted to ask a little bit further about that and in terms of his game experience and just being able to be in your system for a second year. Have you seen anything you know, in, in the time you know, in fall camp and in the spring that has really jumped out at you? Is there anything that he's done that's really improved? You know, I, I think the biggest thing with Jalen, and he knows this, we talk about this, is consistency. You know, so there have always been flashes that you'll be able to see, hey, there it is, right? But then come back in the next day and the inability to be able to stack it, right? And then the next day it's like, no, that, that's not it. Like, that's going to get us beat, whether it's on the field or whether it's off the field. And so I think consistency in the decision-making process and then the proper preparation, right? And then once he's out there, hey, let my rules apply and play fast. And I think we've seen more of that, and, but we got to get the pads on, put them in a live environment. We start getting these scrimmages and really evaluate it and make sure we got the best guy at that spot. Two more. We'll start with Ryan. Hey, uh, Coach, I know you're not able to talk about specific recruiting uh, in the current uh, climate, but you're known as a very effective recruiter. What is your approach uh, in that living room and be able to convince a kid to come to Alabama? Hey, I work for the greatest coach of all time at the University of Alabama. What the hell's wrong with you? No, so I mean, I think, no, obviously, I think recruiting has changed a little bit over the years. I mean, I think used to, I mean, when I was Division II and 1AA, it was about, hey, who had the best relationship? Who was willing to outwork everybody else? All right, who's the guy that's going to help them make a decision or female is going to help them make the decision, right? And why can we do it better than anybody else? All right, well, it's still like that to some degree for some guys, but for most, let's be honest, it's not. Right, does that make sense? So then at that point, now what, all they want to know is, hey, what is it in it for me? Right? So, hey, you get to learn under the leadership of the best coach to ever do it. Here's the strength and condition aspect of how we can make you better. So now to me, you're using more of, all right, what do I have right, to enhance, obviously, their, their experience as a student athlete for them to get what they want, and that's the NFL. And in the process, how can you use the University of Alabama's brand, Nick Saban, to market your name, image, and likeness to allow you to make more money while you're enrolled as a student athlete? And I think the University of Alabama, more importantly, I think Nick Saban allows young people to be able to do that better 
better here than anywhere else. And, and I think so if you got a good product and anything that you do, normally that's easier to sell. Now you still got to develop a relationship, you still got to identify it right and give them what they need. So that's a piece of it. But to, to me, I'm always, I'm who I am, you know, regardless who it is. And, you know, they're either like that, they don't. It's my responsibility to provide the information for them. Hopefully we have better stuff than everybody else and they make the best decision for them. So I think it kind of does it for itself. Hi, Pete. Uh, on paper, do you think that this team, this defense specifically, personnel-wise, has the chance to be the best, most talented group you've coached since you've been here at Alabama? Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest with you, I don't look at all that. You know, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I come in every day. Uh, how can we improve today? Uh, when I normally leave this building tonight, I feel like we're about to get our ass whooped. You know, it's just normally that type of day, right? And then we show back up the next day, and how can we take one step? So, you know, we're, we're fortunate to have some good players. They still got to prepare the right way, practice the butt off so we can get it on Saturday. Uh, but we've had great Great players here in the past, you know, so it's buying in, doing the right thing, competing every day, right, pulling people with you, and let, let's see what happens. All right, Pete, thanks for your time. All right, appreciate it, guys. Thank you.